Hey everyone, welcome back to the revamped Movie Babble podcast, brought to you by Movie Babble. You can find us online at moviebabblereviews.com. And today we've got Colin, Nick, and Brennan breaking down this weekend's top five. That's the first weekend of February. We're going to be talking about Glass, we're going to talk about Aquaman, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, as well as a few smaller movies that just keep plugging along. Breaking down the top five, I'll just list them off real quick. We've got Glass in first place, pulling nine and a half million. Uh, the Upside coming in at 8.8 .8 million. Uh, Miss Bala coming in at 6.7. Aquaman still in the top five at 4.7, almost 4.8. And then Into the Spider Verse is still actually going pretty strong, all things considered, at 4.4. Yeah, good stuff. I guess we should kind of go with glass to begin with here um we can go around and kind of give our thoughts but i'm so i don't know you've got you both of you have seen this movie right oh yeah so i don't quite know how you guys feel about it i mean i kind of liked it i mean my reviews on the site uh can go check it out i guess uh shameful plug um <laughs> but i'm really happy for m night and all of this because he's at this point, he's basically self-financing all of his movies. So he put up this entire $20 million budget himself. So good for him making his own movie and it's successful and it's already, already getting above 200 million worldwide or right around there. So really good for him. Um, the movie itself is, you can take it or leave it, but I'm just, I kind of, I'm just impressed with uh, the man being able to kind of make his own movies and, get them wide released um i don't know what you guys think but yeah you know what for sure i think there's a huge respect factor that goes into this i mean with split uh self-financing that and then glass here as well and you know people are saying that it's it's not making as much as they would have hoped that the studio would have hoped but i think he's happy of three weeks in a row at number one they're at about 200 million now they're at 199 they're going to pass it tomorrow for sure um the movie is, is super successful a 20 million dollar budget and this thing's going to break through 200 million who knows? Maybe it has a shot at hitting 300. Um, but I, I, for sure, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he has uh, to bring next because I think this gives him new life for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I I think well because after he, I mean, his he had his big downturn where everyone knows about it. He had his all his really, <laughs> he all his yeah. really really shitty movies right in a row, and then he kind of just teamed up Jason Blum over at Blumhouse, just kind of took him under his wing. It's like, hey, like. Make whatever you want, do your thing, like, we'll help you out. And, I mean, a lot of that was just because Shyamalan was self-financing his movies. So Jason Blum was like, yeah, fuck it. Like, <laughs> we'll just kind of throw it out in the theaters and see what happens. Um, but then, yeah, the visit happened, and he had to, like, put a mortgage out, a second mortgage out on his house yeah. to, like, yeah. actually put that in the theaters. So at this point, like, honestly, he could probably use more control with his movies because I feel like for most of them it's – a lot of him kind of just doing whatever he wants because he's self-financing them. But they're all interesting, and he's making money, and he's getting to be able to, like, he's he's making a living doing what he loves. So I say good for Shyamalan. Good for him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's made, his comeback is really impressive because um, he was, especially after the last air, Airbender and all that, he was pretty much make or break it with the visit. And the fact that he was able to continue uh, with Unbreakable, which he always said was a trilogy, and no one ever believed him. And now, <laughs> 20 years later, we're finally seeing the uh, conclusion to that. It is just pretty impressive and kind of a testament to his dedication doing all that. Oh, for sure. You know what? And as I said earlier, I'm just really excited to see what's next now. I want to see a new direction from him. I want to see another even if it's a small scale story, kind of like the visit or even split, I want to see something like that. I want, I want to see him again. I'm very excited. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be seeing his next movie for sure. Opening weekend, no matter what it is, because the intrigue that comes with this guy, it, it it's, it's incredible. Even despite the, um, the misfires he's had in the past, he still continues to chug along and you got to respect that. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where no matter what, the movie is or how good it is or just how ungodly awful it is it's always interesting in some way 
Right. Like you, you always talk about it. Like last airbender, I have never been able to sit through that in one sitting. Like it is just so <laughs> terrible. It might be one of the worst, like, I think it might be the worst big budget blockbuster to ever get in, in the theaters. It's so bad. But at the same time, it's still really interesting to talk about for how terrible it is. Right. And I think all of his failures are kind of like that in the same way. So I, I give him credit for just being able to just keep going along. And he's, he's been very open about how he might have been uh, drinking the Kool-Aid a little too much on himself uh, after everyone called him Max Spielberg and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So I think he's kind of getting to his happy place and uh, more power to him. I, I, I have nothing but respect for the man, even, uh, even with uh, his up and down quality of his movies. So. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you want to guys uh, move into the upside now? Yeah, sure. Let's do awesome. it. So yeah, the upside upside eight point eight million dollars this week, and it's up to seventy five million uh, domestically, eighty one uh, worldwide. This thing's killing it. Uh, it just continues to chug along. It only had a twenty five percent drop this weekend from last. What do you guys think about this? Um, so, I haven't seen the movie. Oh. No, go yeah, ahead, buddy. Okay, I haven't seen the movie personally, but it was one of those that I was kind of keeping my eye on because I honestly didn't think it would have legs at all. I mean, it's a it's a pretty decent pairing with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart, but just it kind of looked like Oscar bait, but also trying to appeal to be really comedic and I don't know, it just looked like a mess to me. But to see that it's actually made a decent amount of money and at least gotten its budget back and looks like almost doubled its budget. Uh, even domestically is mm -hmm. kind of impressive just to see that continue to keep going along and what is it it's fourth week out yeah fourth week yeah uh, yeah it's it's one of those movies so for some reason i have an odd fascination with S stx entertainment the studio that released this film yeah um so basically they're they're one of these studios that kind of co-financed all of their movies with Chinese media companies because they figured a good way to kind of make money is to kind of go hard in both the United States and China, which is, makes sense. But yeah. they've just kind of floundered like a lot <laughs> with all of their movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like they were really in trouble. I mean, they, they released Valerian in the City of a Thousand Pla Planets uh, mm. a few years ago, which, yeah, not the best uh, financial uh, – uh, work on that one um, that was one of the biggest flops of recent memory um, they've really they're kind of like a studio light like they've tried to do everything that every other studio does but they don't quite have the resources to do it um, they've done like their their dramas and their big budget action movies and things like that but so and for this movie um, I know that it was supposed to be a Weinstein movie um, a few years ago right, yeah, that's true that was uh it's not gonna happen now. Uh, so it was, I think it was filmed back in 2016 or something like that. And it was put in the can for a while just cause the, all that's Weinstein stuff started to come up and they didn't really know what to do with it at the, at the time. And then STX was like, ah, fuck it. We'll take it right. <laughs> and try to put two stars out of it. And it's, it's, I give them credit. It's working. It's going to be one of their bigger hits in a while. It's it'll definitely pass a hundred million. I don't know what you guys think there, but oh yeah, I agree. For sure. Oh yeah, um, and just it's it's technically a smart play because uh, for those that don't know, it was based on the Untouchables, the French film that came out in like 2011, yep. which was like until before it got its uh, U.S. release, it was literally like one of the biggest like box office box office successes like ever to like like one of the highest grossing movies ever not to have a U.S. release. So, I mean, this movie is okay. I don't, I don't know if uh, Brennan, have you seen it or uh, the upside? No, I actually haven't seen it. So it's it's exactly what you think it is. It's just overly schmaltzy and kind of just trying to be sweet, but it kind of works just because the two stars are really, really good. Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston are really fun. Yeah, they're likable Nicole, guys for sure. Yeah, and Nicole Kidman kind of gets off to the side, but you know she's a good name to put in your movie. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. This movie, I give give them credit. It's making money. I think it's really helped just because its box office has been kind of depressed the past few weeks. But it's a film you, that I'm definitely going to see just because of the success that it's had. I don't know if I'm going to wait to see if it hits a streaming service or uh, I'm, I may go maybe in a morning morning showing. 
Um, but it's a film that I'm definitely going to see at some point just because of how successful it's been. Yeah, absolutely. But I've heard good things all around. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that have gone to see it. They, they just say the same thing. Everyone says the same thing. It's an enjoyable time. Yeah, it's one of those movies that it's just – it kind of just plays all the right thing, all, plays on all the right like points to be a really solid crowd pleaser. Like it's not, it's it's not like super artsy fartsy or anything like that. It's just very straightforward and just trying to be really sweet. And that's kind of what a lot of people look for in a movie. Like yeah. we, some, we sometimes think about like how the hell is this movie making money? Like just audiences just have just dif- audiences just have different needs for a movie, and this is seeming to fit a lot of needs. So plus, Kevin Hart's a big is like one of our last few, I would say, stars that can really open a movie. And so, yeah, um, yeah good for the upside. <laughs> yeah, I, for sure. I think Brian Cranston plays a lot into that as well. Because, I mean, half of the people going to see movies know him as Heisenberg, but the other half know him as, uh, I can't think of his name, and Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, but he's known as a very good balance between dramatic in comedy just because he did comedy for such a long time and then he wowed everybody with what he could do dramatically and so i think when you're trying to make a movie like this he just brings a lot to the table and i can't help but think that's a lot of where the upside success is coming from as well yeah so true really true um i guess from there i wanted to just i don't really have much to say about this next movie uh miss bala just <laughs> Besides the fact that Bala translates to bullet in English, and that's the stupidest <laughs> fucking thing to have your movie named Miss Bullet. Um, this movie is, I haven't seen it just because travel and whatnot, but um, it sounds like it's straight out of 1992. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I <laughs> just, this movie is just another Sony flop is what it looks like. I mean, it's only $15 million budget and it made about 6.7 this week. So I mean, it'll probably make its money back, but I just could not care less about this movie or what happens to it. <laughs> the progression over Saturday, Sunday definitely surprised me with this film. I mean, it looked like it was almost going to surpass Glass this weekend. If you look at the Friday numbers, it's they're both at 2.75, 2.76. They're both around there. Oh, and then it kind of just it dropped off like uh, through the Saturday, Sunday in comparison to Glass. Yeah, it really just seems like the people who saw it saw it who wanted to see it and then they were like wait this is terrible and then it just made no money yeah because what you were saying it dropped 63 percent on sunday yeah which is just yeah that's not good that's not what you want to see no um so this i imagine that i mean next weekend is going to be pretty packed so i imagine this oh, one yeah. will just kind of just drop pretty quickly and then no one will remember it and then it'll show yeah. up it'll show up on like voodoo or like on demand and you'll be like oh yeah that was like a thing for like five seconds yeah <laughs> you know what i feel really bad for anthony mackie because he just keeps getting put in these kinds of movies yeah that they're they're really targeted as like yeah this is the next hard-hitting gritty uh gangster action movie you've never seen anything like it before and then it's the same story you know they they finish yeah. with maybe five or ten million. You never hear of hear of them again. I feel like the move for any movie is like when you need like a really hard nosed like like either like drug like drug pusher or just like a gang member. It's like, hey, is Anthony Mackie available? Because I just feel like he's just <laughs> the same guy in every single movie. Like I love I love the guy, but he was in this, and he was just in the Hate You Give like a couple months ago, and he was the leader of a gang in that movie. I mean, and you just go back to all of his other movies as well and TV and whatnot. Like, something about he just likes playing these characters. I don't really know what um, that is, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, that's that. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, so we got Aquaman here at uh, number four this weekend. 4.7 million this weekend, getting up, getting it up to a $323 million total domestically. It's its seventh week at the box office. It's it's really it's really surprising me, um, but it just keeps uh, continuing to make money. It's, yeah, it's, Aquaman would not have been who I thought would lead the movie that got the DCEU past a billion dollars for the first time. Just yeah. given the fact that the character is pretty traditionally a joke. <laughs> uh, but but I think one of the few things the DCEU has done really well in my opinion is 
making him his own thing and really right. letting Jason Momoa bring him to life and turn Aquaman into a badass, which I thought was pretty impossible. My man. <laughs> He's got like the perfect look for it. I mean, for what they're trying to accomplish. I mean, Jason Momoa, that's good casting. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, cool. it pa- passed the Dark Knight Rises as well. It's the highest grossing DC film ever. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> Um, it's, it's a thing. Um, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't know how you guys, I didn't really, I wasn't a huge fan of this movie. Um, I thought it was really, uh, just like overblown and just, it was really long for me and, but good for, good for DC. And I kind of like, it's one of those things where I've liked all of the characters in all of these movies, maybe not their characterization, but like the personalities in all of these movies. Right. And just wish, uh, I mean, this movie is like leaps and bounds ahead of what we've seen the DCU in the past. Like the fact that it's just a competent movie, I just think is just a win in its book. But um, yeah, good for, good for Jason Momoa. He's becoming a star. Um, good for Amber Heard. Um, Nicole Kidman ate a fish in this movie. So that was great. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> this movie it's right at it's over at 1.1 billion right now which is just like absurd to me um and it'll probably get to like 1.2 or something like that by the end of its run yeah you, know, yeah. you can see all of worldwide and things like that but yeah this movie i imagine we're gonna hear something about aquaman 2 sometime soon yeah things like that i know because warner brothers was like kind of putting a lot of their dc movies on hold until they kind of found out what was going to happen with Aquaman, how it was going to perform. And then, I mean, we've kind of seen it in the past few weeks. We've gotten a lot of traction with uh, the Batman, with uh, Matt Reeves' as Batman, and kind of hearing that Ben Affleck is officially out after we knew he was out for like a couple months. But yeah, um, we finally know that he's done. And we've kind of heard stuff about the Joker and the Birds of Prey. So they're, they're starting to feel confident again after this movie, which is kind of cool. So hopefully... We get some really cool movies. I'm still holding out hope just because these characters are just really cool. And I just kind of want to see what they do with them. Yeah, for sure. I also, like me, I mean, uh, yeah, no, no, you, you can do that, Colin. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what James Gunn does with Suicide Squad. Now oh, that yeah. he's officially been announced for Suicide Squad 2. Because, uh, I mean, the first Suicide Squad is just DC trying to recreate Guardians of the Galaxy. And so I now hate, that they... <laughs> I hate that movie so much. I'm gonna say right now, actually, just kidding. The last air, I hate, I hate this movie more than the last Airbender. It's a hot take. It's a okay. really fiery hot take. But I'm okay. saying I hate that movie so much. I'm sorry, Colin. Continue. I just want to throw that in there. <laughs> but I'm excited to see what he does because uh, I don't know if you saw any of the news that he was reportedly given his pick of DC people, um, including Superman, and he settled on Suicide Squad. Yeah, I saw so, that. Since they were trying to mimic him to begin with, I'm excited to see how the actual creative genius they were trying to capture is able to do uh, with the characters. Yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, it's just, I think this is just a, kind of an inflection point for just Warner Brothers and DC in general. Um, I think we're, gonna, we're definitely going to see, um, they have the Joker coming out next year, and I don't quite remember when all the other movies are coming out, but I think we're going to see like 2020 and 2021 are going to be, there's going to be a lot of movies that hit theaters from DC. So good for them. Yeah. They're kind yeah, of figuring it out. I mean, uh, it was re- a really tough time. Warner brothers was really tough because they were merging with AT&T at the time when all these movies were coming out. And there's just so many different um, people ta- saying and wanting different things with the movies. And it really showed because just all these movies felt like, a thousand people had their hands on it at one point yeah so good for them they're figuring stuff out i mean they really don't need my, my help because they're a multi-billion dollar company but <laughs> good for them they need your wallet though that's true <laughs> um i'm really yeah they got, for Shazam. yeah me too i was just gonna bring that up yeah, so Shazam in april yeah. and then uh october joker yeah yeah right. yeah and then next year i think february they got birds of prey scheduled for february 7th 2020 yeah, and yeah. then uh summer wonder woman 84 then isn't Batman, isn't the Batman later that year? Uh, they have it in 2021 currently. Okay, 2021. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's been pushed back a bit with Justice League. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And then everything with Affleck and nobody really knew what was going on. 
Yeah, good stuff. But I'm worried that Shazam is just going to get overrun because Shazam, Hellboy, and Avengers Endgame all open in a really tight window. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to do okay. Um, I think it's it's it definitely looks like it's more of a modest budget. It looks like it's they're kind of playing more of like a ground game with it, and it looks like it'll be more stripped down and kind of focused on the comedy, which um, that's will be refreshing. So maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't need to get that billion dollars to be successful or something like that. Maybe it right. just get like four or five hundred million, which I mean, still absurd, but you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see. I have high, I have high hopes for for Shazam as well. I can't believe I forgot that one. That one looks really fun. Yeah, they have the budget right now listed at ninety million. So that's a safe that's a safe number for DC. Um, yeah, I think that's others. perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll move into number five on the weekend here. Um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, four point four million. They're up to one seventy five domestically. It's now Sony's. Uh, all-time animated film, highest grossing, and uh, 347 million globally. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. What's your guys' take on that? I mean, I loved the movie. Yeah, I, me too. It was really refreshing, not only as a Spider-Man movie, but for Sony's animation studios as well. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when you consider that they also put out the Emoji movie, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Um, oh God! It's it's just it's a film that it it was so refreshing, so creative, so it felt so new. Even though it it's still a Spider Man film, we've had how many? But it still felt so new, so fresh, and I'm I'm so excited. I want to see more. Um, but it, it's definitely a movie that I hope people and it looks like people are still latching onto it. I mean, it still has legs. Eighth week, and it's got four point four million this weekend. It only dropped twenty seven percent from last weekend. It's still chugging along, which is it's really good to see. Yeah, I think it's um, it's really been benefited from the uh, the Oscar nominations and Golden Globe stuff as well because it's 100%. been kind of it's kind of just been creeping along. It didn't open very high, if memory serves. It was like thirty or forty million, something yeah. like that. It's opening yeah. weekend, so it's just kind of been chugging along. And it's I think the word of mouth game is really big with this one because everyone who sees it, it, I haven't heard anyone who's seen this be like it's complete shit. Like I've never heard every, that. No. Yeah, everyone has been saying this movie is anywhere from good to great and in my in my view it's been it was great it was one of my favorite movies of 2018 so i think it's right it's sitting at about 350 million worldwide um i would love to see that get to like 400 million at the very least um i mean i imagine the the merchandising and things like that have been really big on this movie as well yeah yeah um but it's just kind of impressive when we think about Lord of Miller, I mean, they have were huge with Jump Street and everything like that, but it's kind of crazy to think about how they've they've really made their stake in animated movies so far, because they had Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and Legos. They're big with the Lego stuff, um, so really good for them. They've really shown that Solo probably would have been better <laughs> if, <laughs> if Disney just let them do their thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy for this movie. I hope I keep. I hope I hope it does really well. And it has a modest budget too, just 90 million as well. Um, so I mean, they, they're making quite the profit, and all the awards talk too. So I mean, it, it's really good. I'm, I am really proud of this film as well, for sure. And it came away with seven Annie Awards over the weekend. So even oh, amongst the uh, animation elite, it's just I, it's actually swept quite a few awards and nominations. Since it's been it's, out. Would you guys say it has a lock at the Oscars for the animated feature or no? I sure hope so. I it's really better. hope so. The only film I find as a sleeper would be Isle of Dogs. That's the only one I see as a sleeper. Maybe. But, so, I, but I think I, Spider-Verse is going to win. I heard a great rule of thumb a while ago. I forget what critic it was. But um, they say a lot of the time it's the Academy when they vote for, when they vote for things like this. It kind of just comes down to which movie sounds the least silly when you put it on the ballot. So in that way, I'm kind of I'm kind of um, nervous for it because if you go by that uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse sounds a lot less silly than Isle of Dogs or Mirai or any other movies that comes out. So I'm worried that the the stodgy and like old uh, Academy members will just have no idea what to do with this film. 
and they'll just and they'll just go with Isle of Dogs because they'll be like, oh, this makes me happy and this is easy for me to deal with. So that's would, the only yeah. that's the only fear that I have. Did you did any of you guys see that movie, Isle of Dogs, or no? Um, yeah, I, I saw it. Best. I, I, was, I really enjoyed it actually <laughs> more than I thought I would. I really dug that film. I still like Spider Verse more, but I mean, I, I did like Isle of Dogs. Yeah, it's one of it's the only one in this group that's like pretty adult. I mean, I think it's, I think it was actually a PG thirteen movie. Um, yeah, I think it was too. Been. Yeah, so it's kind of the only one that really skews adult in the animation one. So that could, you're right, that could be a big sleeper. But I'm hoping Spider Verse wins because then that'll lead yeah, to more box office success and then you will yep. just have the old sony will just let lord of miller just do really weird stuff with a hopeful sequel to this movie so yeah yeah speaking of uh oscars and stuff you guys want to look into some of the other movies here green book had a pretty good weekend um again uh sixth place 4.3 million dollars definitely all the award season buzz is helping that film um it just doesn't seem to go away what do you guys say yeah, it's one of those movies where when it first came, I think it first came out around Thanksgiving and people were saying that it was kind of a flop, like it didn't really make a bunch of money. And then somehow it just kept chugging along and yeah. like the awards buzz, like it wasn't strong at first, but then it really started to grow. And then which really, I mean, the past couple of weeks, it's just been kind of hanging around and it's making a lot more money. So, I mean had a budget of 23 million and it's made 81 worldwide. So I, that's probably a success and universal. And I think it's participant, participant media who drew, who released this, but um, at this point it's definitely a success and I'm a little nervous that it's going to win a lot of awards just because it's a lot of we've, if you've read anything about this movie, just the people who were involved or in how they put this movie together. It's troubling to say the least. So I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. know. We, we shall see, but it's definitely, it's a success. Good for the, good for universal. I mean, but it's kind of all I have to say about that one. Yeah. I will be honest here. It's the only one of the uh, eight nominees I haven't seen. I've seen the other seven. Um, so I do plan to see it before uh, the Oscars come around, but yeah, a lot of the things I've been reading are troubling. I'll go into it with an open mind when I see it. But, uh, yeah, it's the only one I haven't seen. I'm surprised, actually, because you have these other um, nom- nominees for Best Picture that are in, in theaters right now, and they aren't gaining the same traction with the award season buzz that Green Book is, um, say, the favorite. or I mean, it's, they're still making uh, moderate money. They're still doing okay, but they're not really gaining the traction that Green Book is with all the award season buzz. Yeah, I think it's it kind of goes back to the idea of it's just – it's driving Miss Daisy again. So if you've seen yeah. that movie, you know what yep. this movie is. But it's just it's very simple and it's very easy to deal with. It's very palatable and how it deals with its which is with its themes, which I found pretty troubling. But for a lot of people yeah. for a lot of people that is just really sweet. Like people will people are, some people are raving over this film because they just think it's so sweet and earnest and delightful. And so that's kind of I think what we're seeing here is just people just wanted to go see a movie and they saw it when they and they were like, you know what, that was really delightful and I enjoyed my time. And I think many more people than not are going to that coming out of that movie with that idea. So, right. and I think that's how it stacks against most of the other best pictures right now because it's really the only one that is feel good or it doesn't have some kind of troubling message or or plot to it. And I think it's a very comfortable movie, just like you said. Like you can watch, you like, yeah, I, I feel great. Whereas if you watch, you know, like A Star Is Born, the uh, ending does not leave you the happiest. <laughs> no, very so true, so true. Yeah. I wanted to, so I wanted to point out, uh, just for our odds and ends here, I really wanted to get into. Um, first of all, I wanted to say good job to Cold War. Um, it's slowly making money. Um, for Amazon Studios, it's um, some weird, some really surprising and um, nominations at the Academy. You got the best director, best cinematography, and best foreign film. So good for that. And it's sure. and it's made it's made two million so far, which is I think is actually pretty solid for a foreign film um, in these days. Um, so just good for that movie. I just wanted to shout it out really quick. And then my other one, my other just weird off the wall choice here was um the wild pear tree um so no one i I can guarantee that about no one who's listening to this podcast will have ever heard of this movie but 
It is a really just it's three hours and ten minutes. Uh, for, it's a Turkish movie, and I have no idea what it's about, but it's apparently pretty good. And it it opened at one theater this weekend and made five thousand three hundred ninety two dollars. So good for you, Turkey! You made a movie, and it's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> there you go. I'm also gonna for the audience here point out um, the documentary from Peter Jackson. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the day shall not grow old. One. Have you got any of you guys seen that yet, or no? Yes. It's on my list. It's on my list. It, it was is so it was good. really a good time. I mean, I saw it back in December and I reviewed it. My reviews up on the um, Movie Babel uh, website. There, you can check it out. I was really blown away by this. And and the best thing about it is, uh, Colin, as you know from seeing it, when Peter Jackson comes back at the end to kind of give a thirty minute little documentary on the documentary. Did you, did you stick stick around for that? Yeah, I did. That that that's that's cool to see. I mean, he shows how he transforms all the um all the all the uh, footage to kind of modernize it colorize it and it it's a really good documentary it's a really intimate intimate look in the lives of some soldiers in world war one uh it was really impressive to me and i'm happy to see it get more of a wide release now 735 theaters this last weekend 2.4 million it's up to 10.7 domestically so uh there there you go they shall not grow old yeah they've been they've been slowly expanding it over the past month and they finally stopped doing the just one day showings and opened it up to more of a traditional release. And I'm just excited to see it growing and the word of mouth on it has been really just tremendous. And, and it, again, it, it does provide a really in-depth look at parts of the war that you never would really consider or never really talk about because they're not the, the flashy and the showy aspects of world war one. Yeah. Um, and, like you mentioned, the documentary at the end, just seeing Peter Jackson's passion for it and how, you know, this is something that he's lived. Uh, these, like when he pulls out the uh, the artillery gun that they used to record the sound because they didn't know what it made back in 1918, but he had his own replica of it. Yeah. And just cool stuff like that to see how he brought that to life. And, you know, he did this for a paycheck of zero dollars. So that's, yeah. that's something too. Oh, really cool. I didn't know that. Good that's for him. Little, that's a little fun little tidbit there. Yeah. Um, one last thing for me, um, I just, I haven't seen this movie yet just cause with Sundance and everything travel and whatnot, but I really am dying to see Serenity just for how to see how terrible it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I know Brennan, you've seen it cause you, yeah. it was, you, you put your review on the site. I have heard nothing. I don't know anything about this movie, uh, other than how just generally how insane it is and just how just batshit crazy it gets. And I cannot be more excited and I want to, I hope that that word is starting to get out, that it's just one of the most bizarre things. Um, and I'm hoping that it gets like a really like cult, like as a like cult legs where like, <laughs> just like five people go and see it like a hundred times and it somehow makes money. Um, <laughs> Cause I just get really excited when things just get this bad shit insane and gets people buzzing. So I hope it gets its weird uh, cult following somehow. Um, yeah, you know what? It's, so I go and see it. I'm pretty hyped because the trip, did you guys see the trailer or no? Yeah, the trailer's pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good trailer. I mean, it has intrigue, right? Like it's not giving you too much. There's a lot of mystery involved in the trailer. So I'm also a big Anne Hathaway fan and Matthew McConaughey. I mean, he's cool, obviously. Um, so you go check out, I go check out this movie. It starts out normal, but it, it just, as it, as it progresses, it, it becomes just, it, it, yeah, you should definitely check it out. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm so excited. To check it out. <laughs> it's I one could. of those movies that just came out of nowhere for me, at least, because I don't think I heard anything about this movie until maybe a week before. <laughs> and then I just saw the trailer. I was like, that looks like it could be interesting. And then a week later it was out and all the reviews were in. And I was like, I don't know if I want to see this one or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was disappointing for me because uh, I think they had a uh, review embargo. I didn't see any I didn't see any numbers till the day before. Um, like I didn't see any raw tomato figures until the day before it came out. There's probably so, a reason for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that always sure. scares me. It's kind of a bummer when I saw them, but I'm I'm very open minded about what I see, so I was still pretty open minded going into it. But I mean, it is it's a wild film for sure. Definitely check it out. I am so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's another film we got here that's kind of still pumping along? I'm gonna bring up the Mule real quick. That's another one that I reviewed a little while back. When this thing debuted, it didn't really debut too hot. 
but it is still making money. It's over a hundred million domestically. It's at one oh one point seven now. Made a about nine fifty over the weekend. Clint Eastwood. Did you guys see this? I mean, it just it just keeps making money. I don't like it has legs. Yeah, I so I saw it. Um, it's I wouldn't say it's a good movie, but I, no, I it agree, definitely yeah. it definitely plays into um, like there's just not enough like content out there for older audiences to go to, and yeah. so people go see. Oh, it's a Clint Eastwood movie. I'll just go see it. Like they don't right. know, they know nothing about it. They read the snippet in their morning paper when they were having their coffee at five a, five a.m. in the morning. Um, they say, oh, Clint Eastwood movie. I liked, I liked the good and the bad and the ugly when I saw it in theaters as a child. I'll go see this movie. <laughs> um, and, and then it's made a shit ton of money. It's over a hundred million here in the U S and it's starting to roll out to foreign audiences as well. So oh, yeah. like good, good for that. I mean, it's another Warner brothers movie. That was another probably one of the best trailers I've seen in a really long time. Oh, it was a good trailer. So, so yeah. Good, Actually, good for yeah, them. yeah, my 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 parents went to see this, and my dad told me the climax of the film is the trailer. That's what he said. So, th- oh. there you go. That's kind of a taste of it. There, he didn't really like it too much. Because really good stuff. The trailer was a little misleading, I'd say. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, it's playing as this really hard thriller that is just like you just like on the edge of your seat the entire time. And it's really just Clint Eastwood just being old and driving his car yeah. across the country um, and like being just casually racist to people. So yeah, Clint good stuff. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then I have a, a tip, but it hasn't dropped. It hasn't had a 50% drop yet. It's, it's never had a weekend drop of 50% from the previous weekend. It's yeah, really impressive. Yeah. Then one last movie I'd like to note, is also Bumblebee has just kind of slowly, slowly made a profit. Um, Because when it started, you know, it started that same weekend with, I believe it was Spider-Verse, and that was right after Aquaman. And so Bumblebee kind of lost that, and it slowly made its way. um, And it started turning a profit, and it looks like it's at $450 million. Oh, nice. uh, Which is mostly been done in the latter half of its release. Yeah, I think it's um I think I heard somewhere where they're going to go forward and make a sequel to it. Yeah. So because it's because it was more modest, definitely more modestly budgeted than the other Transformers movies. What's 135 uh, million and which is probably like right around half of what they Transformers movies usually were. So it's 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 over three times its budget at this point, so it's definitely made something for Paramount. So good for them. Uh, I feel like that's kind of my theme of the podcast. Good for these people. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of I kind of just want Haley Steinfeld and more things. And John yep. Cena is just kind of fun and whatever he's in, even though he's kind of he kind of sucks in this movie. Um, his, his his I thought his character was kind of just like a bummer and not fun, but but who knows? Whatever. Just bring me more Bumblebee. This movie was really sweet, and it really made me happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that kind of wraps it up for this weekend. Uh, next weekend should be a little bit more exciting in terms of how everything's performing. I'm excited. We've got yeah, we literally on. we literally chose the worst weekend uh, to, to, to start <laughs> to this because literally nothing comes out on it's, Super Bowl. It's another little tidbit. <laughs> it's the uh, lowest grossing Super Bowl weekend in 19 years. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting from the bottom. We can only go up from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Really good stuff. Yeah. So I will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening in on the Movie Babble podcast. Feel free to check us out online at moviebabblereviews.com and check back in with us next week as we talk about movies such as The Lego Movie 2, The Second Part, The Prodigy, What Men Want, and Liam Neeson's Cold Pursuit. 